So we're, you don't need to write anything down from this, right? We're just asking questions. This is here. It's available. Here's question number one. Which side is the hypotenuse? So you could say like the left, the right, or you know, the left or the bottom or the, the diagonal. The diagonal right? okay. So there's the hypotenuse. Which side is adjacent to? What does adjacent mean? Next to. So which side is adjacent to or next to angle A? There's angle A. The bottom. So hypotenuse is fixed, right? It's always opposite the 90 degrees. Okay. Adjacent and opposite are not fixed. They depend on where the angle. So they're in relation to an angle, in this case angle A. So what's this going to ask? Which side is opposite to angle A? Okay. So opposite is across from, right? The hypotenuse will always be adjacent to angle A, whether it's here or here, and always across from the right angle. Okay? So hypotenuse, we don't call that adjacent, right? It's the hypotenuse. It's the first side that you pick out and label, right? You say, okay, where's the 90? Let me label the hypotenuse. And then question four, answer the question above if A is the other acute angle. So if A, oops, if A is this angle, where does the hypotenuse now move to? Doesn't move, right? Because hypotenuse is defined by where the right angle is. Is this side opposite angle A? No. No. So what do we have to do with opposite and adjacent? We've got to switch them around, right? So there, that's the basis for trig, right? At least right angle triangle trig, which is what you do in grade 10, is right triangle trigonometry. The whole key comes down to where's the hypotenuse? And with regards to a specific angle, what are the names of these sides? Now I want to have one more thing, or maybe a couple more things. If I call this angle B and angle C, we name our angles with uppercase letters. We name our sides with lowercase letters, but they're in a specific place. So side little a is opposite angle a. That's little a. Side little b is opposite little b and side little c. So when you name a triangle with letters, okay, and whether I give you the sides, if I say triangle little a, little b, little c, you can then name the angles, right? So they create a pair. You've got an angle, you've got the side opposite that angle, they share the same letter, angle uppercase, side lowercase. So if I do this, and make it a right triangle, what's the name of this side? What's this side? What's this side? Perfect, okay? So we got a couple of naming conventions looking at, one is, Hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent. You need those in order to be able to do the trig ratios. The other is naming angles with uppercase letters and naming the side with the letter of the angle which it is opposite. Okay. And in this case, hypotenuse is opposite the 90. Right. Done with that. So let's get rid of that. Do you want to say no? Do you want to continue it? Yes. Okay, what's next? Well, it must be the trig ratios worksheet, which this is not. <laughs> no. Wait, it's loading. This is 30 2 stuff. Partially done. Oh, wait, let's pause. No, oh. we don't need to pause. Trig ratios, opposite and adjacent sides to an acute angle. Here's just going over right. That's why you didn't have to write stuff down, because here it is. The legs of the right triangle are given special names relative to one of the acute angles. How many acute angles are there? Two. Two. Why are they both acute? Yeah, because they have to add up to 90, so they can't be 90, right? You only have one angle, which is 90. Okay, so here is side A. Let me just drag the frame a tick. Okay, so here is angle A. This is the side opposite angle A. This is the side adjacent to angle A. So what will we call this? The hypotenuse. So hypotenuse has nothing to do with how you name anything else, right? It's just the side which is opposite the right angle. 
Note, if your point of reference changes to the other acute angle of the same triangle, then the opposite and adjacent sides change as well. Label the sides that are opposite and adjacent to angle B. Let's start with the hypotenuse, which is which? Well, it's always. So here's the hypotenuse. This is the side opposite to angle B. And this is the side adjacent to angle B. You got that? This is like two thirds of the battle with trig, right? If you're going to do any of the stuff that follows for the next few years with regards to trig, it's getting the side name, right? Once you name the sides, it all falls from there, right? Everything just follows from there. So, very important, right? Be able to name the sides. Watch the teacher demonstration. Uh, so we were a little out of order, right? So we did, we've already done that. Note that we only talk about the side opposite and adjacent to an acute angle, never the right angle, right? We can't talk about adjacent to the right angle because that's kind of both of these sides, right? They're both adjacent to. The only thing we do talk about with the right angle is opposite because that's the hypotenuse. Okay, but we don't call it opposite. We call it the hypotenuse. Label the hypotenuse and the side opposite and the side adjacent to the indicated acute angle. Okay, go ahead. You can do that. So, label the fill in your worksheets. You have the worksheet. You need a pencil too. So always start with the hypotenuse, which is you know, true. And then name the other sides. Is adjacent, just think of adjacent as going to join to the letter, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's part of. So this is adjacent. And you are complacent if you. Oh, that's right. Everything you write is correct, Mr. Yammer. We know that. You never make a mistake, either on purpose or not. No, I make lots of mistakes. That's why we do math in pencil. Right? Mechanical pencil. That's bad. And we have an eraser handy. Right? Because you're going to make mistakes. Okay, we good with this? Yeah. Let's move on. I think I have another page. Trig ratios. Here they are. The three sides of a right triangle can be compared to each other using ratios called trigonometric ratios. Each of these trigonometric ratios has a special name. The three primary trig ratios are... Yeah, primary trig ratios. Sine of A, which is abbreviated S-I-N, but is pronounced sine. Okay. It's the length of the side opposite angle A over the length of the hypotenuse. It's a ratio. It's just a number, right? If I take this number and divide it by that number, I get a number. Cosine, which is abbreviated C-O-S, and often pro pronounced as cos, so you can call that cos. This is sine, this is cos. Okay. You, could, you could also say cosine for this. Nobody does. But we don't say sin. Okay. So cosine, abbreviated cos, is the length of the side adjacent to angle A divided by the length of the hypotenuse. The tangent of A, which we call tan, and you can just say tan. You couldn't say anything else for this other than tan is the length of the side opposite angle A divided by the length of the side adjacent to angle A. Okay. So those are your three 
primary trig ratio, sine cosine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I can show you a way. I don't know if it's in here or not. I can look and see. I'll show you a little mnemonic thing to help you remember it. Come on here. Let's do this. So usually what I'll do is if I can abbreviate, I call this like it's opposite over hypotenuse. This is adjacent over hypotenuse. And this is opposite over Adjacent. Okay. That's generally how I think, right? Because I, I, I can write down the length of the side. This is what this means, right? It's the length of the side opposite, but it's opposite over hypotenuse, right? When I say opposite adjacent hypotenuse, I'm talking about the length of the side. So that kind of abbreviates down to like OH, AH, OA, and we put it together in this thing SOH, CA. H T O A, which is pronounced Sokotoa, and means sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. Right? That's the one I learned 150 years ago when I learned this. And so when your parents, if you walk home and say, hey, we learned Sokotoa, they'll know exactly what you're talking about. Probably. I'll leave that out for a second if you want to write that down. Right? So sine opposite over hypotenuse, S-O-H, C-A-H, T-O-A. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, tan is opposite over adjacent. Right? That'll stand you in good stead for all the math you do in years to come, especially if it involves right triangles. Watch the teacher GeoGebra demonstration trig ratios to help answer questions three and four below. All right, well, let's preview the questions and then we'll watch the teacher GeoGebra demonstration. Um, does the sine, cosine, or tan of an angle depend on the size of the triangle? That's one of the questions. You don't need to keep in mind because you can just glance down, right? What is the only thing that sine, cosine, tan of an angle depend on? Okay, so here's this thing called GeoGebra. It's actually free. You, you can download it. You can get it as a web app. It's an Android app. Um, it's, you figure it out, right? You can draw circles and that. You don't need to use it, but you know, here it is, and, and we got some stuff here. So these are the ratios of the sides, right? For this angle, which is 40 degrees, and the length of the side adjacent is given as this. So if I change the length, then what I want you to watch for is do any of these ratios change? So as I make this triangle bigger or smaller, have any of these ratios change, right? So they're in the same relation to each other no matter what the size of the triangle is. Right? What's question three? Does the sine, cosine, or tangent depend on the size of the triangle? Okay. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Hey. No, I don't think I can move that one. I think I can move this one. Okay. So what's the answer to question three? No. Okay, here. Let's change angle A. Okay, now they changed. Did they change? No. Okay, got nothing to do with the size of the triangle, right? So the sides stay in the same ratio no matter. So what, what do we say? What kind of triangles are these as I'm dragging this along? They're not right, right? But they are what? What do we do the first day? Similar. They're similar triangles, right? So they're always, the sides are always in the same proportion. Which, whoa. <laughs> that got big. Okay, and uh, what's the other answer? Other question. What is the only thing that sine, cos, and tan depend on? So what it changes the sine, the cosine, and the tangent? The sides are high. What am I changing here? The angle. The angle. That's the answer to number four. So the only thing that's going to change sine, cos, and tan? Right? That's sine, that's cos, that's tan. And all this is doing, we're just not showing you the measurements, but all this is doing, this is actually computing as I do this. It's actually, you know, recomputing all of these things. We're just not, you know, I'm just not showing it to you. I could go in here and, and say, okay, show me this side, show me that side. Right? I'm not going to, but I could. Okay, boom, done, close. Save your chain? Don't save.
Okay, so you got your answer here, which is what? No and angle. No angle. All right, we good so far? All right, let's keep going. Uh, state, which means what? Just the answer. Just the answer, and you show any work. However, you know what? We are going to show some work. So really, you know what? Let's change this to determine. Because it's good to show work, right? I think that way, if you do, for some reason, go back and look at this thing, it's not sort of like, where the heck did that come from, right? Because it's just the answer's written now. I don't remember where this came from. Now, one nice thing about this thing is that you can, always, if, if something happens where you're looking at your notes and it's like, I don't remember how we did this, well, but I do know that we did this, so I can just go back to the video and skip forward and find this section and then watch it again, right? So that's available to you. Okay, so uh, what are we doing? State the three primary, oh, so three primary trig ratios for the indicated angle as a fraction and as a decimal rounded to the nearest hundred. Okay, so first one is sine. I always like formulas, right? So the sine of angle S, the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. You know, because if I write that down every time, do you think I'm going to know what the sign is by the time I've done this worksheet? Yeah. yeah, likely, right? Okay, so I do that every time I do math. I write down the formulas. All right, I'm going to give you the secret to math that I've determined over the years. Formula, substitution, answer. That's it. You just figure out what formula am I using. You substitute into the formula, you get an answer. There's a little bit more to it than that, right? Because you've got to figure out what formula do I use, right? So it's not, you know that easy all the time, but it's like, figure out what formula do I use? Okay, write the formula down, let's substitute into the formula, let's work it out, let's get an answer, and then we check back, really, you look back and say, does that make sense, is that right? Okay, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse, sine of angle S, the opposite side to angle S is what? Eight. The hypotenuse is? Eight divided by ten is? They want it to the nearest hundredths, uh, you know, there's always that argument, right? Do I put a zero on the end then if it's hundred? I would, key doesn't show one, but so yeah, either one, right? 0 0.8 is actually exact, 0 0.80, okay, you know, get hundred. Coast. What's coast defined as again? I forget. Jason over hypotenuse. Okay, that's the formula. Let's substitute in. What's adjacent? Six. Six. Hypotenuse? Ten. Six over ten is? Zero point six or zero point six zero. Oh wait. Must do attendance. Pass that around. If nobody's name is on it, then it's the wrong sheet. I'll get the direction. And what's left? We got sine, we got cos. Tangent, what's tan defined as? The opposite end over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. Which is? What's opposite? Eight. Eight over six. Eight over six. Mm. One point what? One point three three three. One point three three three. Three repeating? Okay. So for repeating decimal. We can just put a bar over the repeating part of it. So if it was like 1.272727, I'd go 27 and just put a bar over the 27. You could also write right, 1.333 just to kind of show, right? I'm going to get you started, and then we just say keep going, right? The dot, 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 just says keep going. What's the formal name for the dot, dot, dot? That's the Nope, from the ellipsis. Hey, you learned something new today. Besides, sine, cos, and tan. Questions? No. Comments? Concerns? Moving on. Okay. Oh, well, um, what's missing? The adjacent. Yeah, the length of the side adjacent. Well, okay, I guess we can't do this one. Let's go to the next one. Now, okay, what do we have to do? Okay. Got to use Pythagorean theorem to calculate this missing side. Okay, so what do we know? What do we call that? Let, for the sake of argument, let's call this x. 
right? Because it doesn't have a letter over here. It's, yeah, it's an unknown. X is always good for an unknown. So what can I write? 8 squared plus x squared is equal to 17 squared. x squared is equal to 17 squared minus 8 squared. What's 17 squared? Like 289? Okay, so it's 289 minus 64. Okay, that's x squared. So x squared is 225. And x is root 225, which is exact, but it also happens to be 15, which is also quite exact. Okay. So sometimes you get an exact value, like root 224 would be an exact value, but it would not be a whole number. Whereas root 225 is an exact value, but it simplifies to a whole number, right? 15. So this side. Uh, well, let's call it x. OK, at which point I'm going to pause this. You're going to write down sine, cos, and tan, right? And we're back, which means, see, all this has magically appeared on the screen, right? I paused it and then wrote this. and then. So if you are watching videos and stuff like that happens, or you can always pause for a sec, hit pause, and say, I want to copy this stuff down. If I haven't got it already, and all of a sudden this stuff appears, right? Question? Um, wouldn't, is the tangent 8 over 17 or is it Didn't do that one on purpose. But good. Yeah. Shows you're paying attention. Okay, what's 8 over 17? Zero point. Does it say what to round to or anything? Oh, yeah, round to the nearest hundredth. Okay, to the nearest hundredth, what do we get? Zero point? Four seven. Four seven? Yeah. 15 over 17? Point eight. Point 0.8. A what? Point eight eight. And eight over fifteen? Eight point five Now rounding nearest hundreds, so we're not going to show any repeating, right? If you are rounding, it's two decimals. Don't so we're repeating on it. It'd be actually wrong. And you'll get to do have you guys seen numerical response questions before? Like yeah. on PATs and that, right? Okay, so Numerical response questions are rounded to the nearest hundred at, at most, right? That's the most you can do. So rounding is very important on those because if you write 0 0.66 and it's supposed to be 0 0.67, it's wrong, right? There's no, oh, they were so close and they just didn't round the last, no, it's wrong, okay? So numerical response are right or wrong. What do we have to do here? We're missing something. All right, let's call that H for hypotenuse. So remember, we only ever round our final answer, which means we need to carry this until we get the final answer, right? Because that's part of We're going to use this in calculating the, so this is exact, right? 519.93? Or is it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah? OK, good. So root 519.93 is the exact value. That's the one we're going to want to use. Did you guys? At some point, I'll learn names. But for now. Um, so root 519.93 is the exact value that we want to use. So hang on, pause. OK, so the sine of d <coughs> is opposite over hypotenuse. <coughs> kind of boring, huh? But every time you write that formula down, you're ingraining within yourself that formula, right? So that when the test comes, you're not sitting there going, what's sine again? Okay. So opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is what? 19.2. 19. 
And this is the root of 519.93. Okay, so I am going to show you how to do that on your calculator. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the 519.93, right? So I need that. So I say it is the root of... Well, actually, no, I'm, I'm going to get the death, the 22 point, whatever it was. Yeah, 22.80197. So what was it? 19.2 squared plus 12.3 squared. Enter. Okay. Oh, that's actually kind of exact. Eh? Um, Just doesn't so go on. All right. This number I want to use, and I'm going to have to use it twice, right? I don't want to have to type it in again. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to store it for future use. Here's how. We're going to hit the STO key, which stands for store. It doesn't actually come up as STO, but it says take the answer. ANS refers to whatever's on the previous line, OK? Because you've got an ANS down here, which we'll get to as well at some point, right? So I'm saying take the answer and put it, OK? So I'm going to hit the alpha key and math, which brings up the letter A. So what I'm saying is I want you to take that value and put it into A. We're going to hit enter. Okay? So now it's in A. How do I know? Well, if I go two times and then go alpha A, give me two times A, what are we going to see? We're going to see like uh, 45.6, blah, 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 right? So A now contains, and if I just go alpha A, right, just A, bring me back A, it'll bring back A. Okay. So that number has now been stored in the variable called A, and we can use it. So now I can go 19.2 divided by A, which is 0 0.84, right, because we're rounding to the nearest uh, 100. So that's the sign. This is kind of the exact value, right? 19.2 over the root. Cos. What's cosine? It's adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, adjacent is beside D, but not the hypotenuse, right? So it's 12.3 over the root of 519.93, which is, and we go back to the calculator. So I want 12.3 divided by A, where I've now stored that, which is 0 0.54. You, it's nice if you can round on the fly. It's nicer if you can round on the fly correctly. Okay? If you can. So now, next calculator trick. I don't round very well. Go to mode. Go down and see where it says float. Move over to 2. What you're now telling the calculator is, and then hit enter, what you're now telling the calculator is, I don't want a floating decimal, right? Like just giving me all the decimals. I want you to round this to two decimal places. Okay, and then I can go second mode, which is quit. So now if I go 12.3 divided by A, your calculator still stores all the numbers, right? All the digits. But it will now round to two decimal places. Right? So if you suck at rounding, then it is a little crutch for you. So 0 0.54. All right. It still maintains all the digits. If I do this, it's going to show me 22.80, but it's going to maintain 22.8019, right? It's going to maintain the full accuracy. It'll just round the end. Okay, and what's left? Tandy? Tandy. Uh, what's tangent? I forget. Opposite over adjacent. Which is... 19.2 over 12.3 equals, don't string your equals, but I don't have much choice here, right? So I'm going to string my equals. Uh, and what's that work out to? 1.56. Okay, so to two decimals, 1.56, right? Uh, bring that back. So I'm going to go back to float mode. The one thing, if you go to two decimals, just remember that you may want to put it back to float. 19.2 divided by 12.3. Uh, yeah, so there's more, right? 1.5609751. If I had it still at two decimals, it would just show me 1.56. Okay, questions, comments, concerns?
trig ratios and your calculator. Well, I thought we were using our calculator. The primary trig ratios exist for almost all angles. Well, two-thirds of the trig ratios exist for all angles, and one-third of the trig ratios exist for almost all angles. And lucky for you, these values are stored in your calculator. I'm not sure how true that is. I don't know if they're stored or they're actually calculated on the fly, because I don't really know how the inside of the calculator works, right? But, you know, we could Google it and find out. Does it actually store them, or does it actually work them out? Use your calculator to state the value of each following trig ratios rounded to four decimal places. Okay. Now, I can round pretty well, so I'm just going to leave it on float. You can set it to four. Like, if I know that I have to do a bunch of calculations, it should be rounded to four decimal places, then I might just say, hey, let's go mode four. Right? Mode and float and then four. Okay, first, before you do anything, you've got to hit the mode key. When we're doing trig, up till grade 12, anyways, we're always in degrees. Your calculator will always set to radians, so you always need to move over, set to degrees, hit enter, and degrees will be sitting there flashing. So you must set your calculator to degree mode, okay? Every time you clear your calculator, which is like every time you're gonna come in and write a test, you're gonna have to clear your calculator, show me at the door, look, it's clear, right, and then gain access. Every time you clear it, it's gonna set back to radians, it's really, it's only the trig unit that matters, but you know, anytime you do trig, you've got to set it to degrees. Okay, so we're in degrees now, and we go second quit. And what's the first one we want to work out? The tangent of 32 degrees. How are we going to do that? Well, let's hit the tan key. Let's put in 32. If you like to be neat, we can close the bracket. Hit enter. 0.6249. Rounding. Questions? So that's how you figure out. So remember, if I drew a triangle, any triangle, that had a 32 degree angle, so any triangle that took a 32 degree angle, if I then took the measurement of the side opposite the 32 degree angle, right triangle, right, with 32 degree angle, if I took the measurement of the side opposite and the measurement of the side adjacent in a right triangle with 32 degrees and divided that, I would get 0.6249. Would it matter how big the triangle was? No, because you saw it, right? I did the notebook thing and I made the triangle bigger, smaller. That ratio holds constant. Okay, what's next? 10 of 84. Okay, 10, 84. Enter. Now, you don't necessarily have to close that parenthesis, right, at the end. If you like to be neat, you can close it. If you don't, it doesn't matter. It will do it for you, right? It'll throw in that last parenthesis. And what do we got? 9.5144. Okay, again, rounding to four decimals. If you have problems rounding, let the calculator do it for you. Hit mode, go down to float, go over to four, hit enter. It will round to four decimals for you. Okay, what's next? Sine of 58.9. How are we going to do that? Well, let's hit the sine key. Sine 58. Point. I'm not going to get the point. Point 0.9. Again, if you like to be neat, close the parenthesis, hit enter. Point 0.8563. Zero point eight. Yes, put the zero before, right? Because it'll set it apart, right? If you just write down a decimal point, sometimes you lose the decimal and all of a sudden you get a number, it's like 10,000 something. So yeah, it goes zero point. I mean, is it wrong if you don't know? Cos of 18.6, all right, kind of obvious what we need to do, right? Cos 18.6, enter. Zero point nine four seven. Eight. Questions, comments, concerns? Everybody check the attendance thing and where is it? Sir? Okay. Almost everybody checked. Alright. Go back. Go away. Wait. Go away. How do I make this go? 
Sometimes it disappears, and sometimes it, oh, I don't know, it disappears. <clears throat> the trig ratio of an acute angle is given. Use your calculator to state the value of the angle. OK, so what did we just finish doing? We said, I want you to give me the ratio of the side opposite over the side, over the hypotenuse, right? The length of the side opposite divided by the length of the hypotenuse for a right angle triangle that has an angle of 58.9 degrees, and I'm talking about that angle, and I want that ratio, and it gave it to you. Okay, does it matter what size that triangle is? No, it just matters what the angle is, right? Sine, cos, and tan depend only on the angle. Right? That's question four. Question three was that no, it doesn't matter what size it is. What if we have the ratio? So we know there's some triangle where this angle, right? Where if I work out the length of the side opposite divided by the length of the hypotenuse is going to be 0 0.5, also known as 1 half. So I want to know what angle does that. So here's how we do it. We're given the sign. What we do is this. The angle A is equal to the inverse sine of 0 0.5. Inverse sine is the opposite operation, right? Just like on your calculator, you got an x squared key, what's the opposite of squaring? Square rooting. So you see where you go second function on the x squared key, you'll get the square root. If you go second function on the sine key, you get sine inverse. That says, I know the ratio. I'm going to give you the ratio. I want you to tell me the angle. 0.5, and the answer is 30 degrees, exactly 30 degrees. Right? It's one of those exact angles. So 30, and there are units, right? And the units are degrees. Yep. How did you get that point? Well, you messed up. Your calculator in degree mode. How do I do that? Mode, hit mode. Arrow to see where you see the word radian next to a degree. Arrow down, arrow over to degree, hit enter. Go home, watch the video, go back about five minutes in the video where I showed you how to do that, and do that. Yeah. So look, if you have problems with that, that's where the videos come in, right? You can go in and say, actually, I'm not getting the answers here. Like, what's the, just back up a little further in the video. You know, all will be explained. Okay, tan A. So how do we uh, untan something? Yeah, so we do the same idea, right? A is equal to the inverse tan, in other words, I'm going to give you, what you're telling the calculator is, I'm giving you the ratio, you give me back the angle that goes with that. Okay, so second, tan inverse, 2.6341. Does it say to the nearest whatever? To the nearest, the nearest tenth of a degree. Nearest tenth of a degree? Okay, so 69.2 degrees. Okay. I'll state this now. If it's exact, you don't need to put 30.0 degrees, right? You can write 30 degrees. That's fine, right? If it's not exact, then you got it. Okay, do the next two. Oh, you've already done them? You, you who work ahead. We'll talk about this flipped class idea. 0 0.8563. And point what? when it runs out of ink. Gotta shake the pen. Okay, agreed, disagree, agree to disagree, agree to agree. Yes, it's right, no, it's wrong. We both got 13.9. Yes, we both got 2. For which? For 13.9 for C. For C. What am I looking at? And 28.1 for D. Yeah. Would, would help me to look at the right line in the key, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay, wait. 13.9, yeah. I think I, I just copied these numbers down again. And 28.1. Better? Yes. Helps when you look at the right line. I should have just calculated them. Speaking of calculating, so the following table provides the trig ratios of several angles. Basically, every angle between 0 and 90 degrees by tens, right? So we've got sines rounded to four decimal places. In this case, we actually are rounding to four, even if it was 0.5. So here's the sines of some various angles. Here's the cosines. 
and here are the tangents. As the size of the angle increases from 0 degrees to 90 degrees, what happens to the sine of the angle? So, what's going on with the sine? It increases. It increases from what to what? Increases from 0 to 1. Um, what happens to the cosine? decreases from 1 to 0, right? So the sine starts at 0, goes up to 1. Cosine starts at uh, 1, decreases to 0. And the tangent of the angle increases from 0 to infinity. Okay? For what angle is the tangent ratio equal to 1? Should be in the chart. Oh, no it isn't. All right, so you have to do this. How do you figure out what angle gives you a tangent of 1? Well, let's see. If I give it the ratio, how do I get the angle? So, I don't know. We've never done that. Oh, wait, maybe we did. 45 degrees. So, why? Why is that so? <laughs> okay, because the calculator says so. How many marks will that get you? Do you think? Yeah. Okay, what's the definition of tangent? The opposite. Opposite over adjacent. Okay, all right, so what do we know? We know that we have a 90 degree triangle. This is 45 degrees, so what's this? 45. This is also 45 degrees. This is the hypotenuse. This is opposite. This is adjacent. What do we know about opposite and adjacent? Uh, but what do we know about opposite and adjacent? There. Isosceles triangle. There's one that said equal, I don't know. Isosceles triangle means that these sides are equal, right? So this is an isosceles triangle. Two sides are equal to each other. It can't be the hypotenuse anything because we know the hypotenuse is the longest side. Therefore, opposite and adjacent sides are equal to each other. So what happens when you divide opposite by adjacent? And they're equal to each other, you get 1. So that's why the tan of 45 degrees is equal to 1, right? So we have an isosceles triangle. Where the opposite and adjacent sides are equal. Tan of 45 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent, which will be equal to 1, because opposite and adjacent are the same. Right, because of the properties of isosceles, you know, angles are the same, blah, blah, blah. Questions? Comments? Concerns? We're almost done. We've got one, one more, well, up here one more page and for you. Explain why the sine of 30 degrees is equal to co 60. So you look in that table, what's the sine of 30? 0.5. What's the cosine of 60? Why are they the same? Okay, so one is increasing from zero to one, but it's, is it just coincidence that at that point they kind of get even? Let's draw a picture. Let me draw a picture. Okay, so here's a right triangle. We're going to call this angle 30 degrees. What does that make this angle? It's got to be 60 because we know these two have to add to 90, right? That's 60 degrees. 
Let's label this triangle for argument's sake, just the sake that we can make an argument, right? So what's the name of this side? Little c, right? Because if I'm not talking about an angle, then the name has to be, OK, what's the name of this side? Little b, what's the name of this side? Little a. OK, the sine of 30 degrees, right, will be the sine of angle c. So the sine of c is equal to what letter over what letter? Okay, let's back up. Sine theta. Ooh. Theta is the x of the world of trigonometry, right? You know how you do algebra, you got x, the unknown's always x. When you do trig, the unknown's always theta. Okay, it's Greek. Theta. What's the definition of the sine of an angle? Think back or flip back a page. Opposite over hypotenuse. What is the sine of angle C? What's the name of the side opposite angle C? Little c over little b. Okay. Okay. So the sine of 30 degrees. What is the cosine of angle B? In terms of the letters, what is it? Oh, sorry, I don't want B. Obviously not B. It's A. All right, my bad. What's the cosine of angle A? Adjacent, right, which is little c, over hypotenuse, which is little b, which looks a lot like this. So these two things are equal to each other. I, I'm going to go one step further. step further. The guy in the other class who asked about it, but we, we don't do classes, they do stuff on their own. Yeah, so the cosine, the co, the co in cosine stands for complementary. Now, you're asking yourself, so what does complementary mean? Complementary angles. What do complementary angles do? Complementary. Yeah, exactly. Looking fine today, right? Yeah. Okay, if I say supplementary angles, anybody got a definition for that? Supplementary. Here's the definition. Complementary angles add to 90 degrees. In this, in any right triangle, what do we know about these two angles? They add to 90 degrees, therefore they are complementary, right? If we take out the 30 and the 60, And we just go with this. The sine of angle C is C over B. The cosine of angle A, which is the complementary angle, is C over B. They're always equal. Okay. So cosine is that. So sine 75 is equal to cos. You can do this in your head, trust me. Oh, it took a long time to get there. Cos of 30, better get there quicker. 60. Sine of 60. Cos of 81. Nine. Good. Okay. For what angle is the sine ratio and cosine ratio equal to each other? Explain why. We met this angle earlier today. Actually, not even that long ago. So what you're thinking about is this, right? I'm going to write this statement, and these two guys need to be the same, and they have to add to 90, and they have to be the same.
They have to add to 90, and they got to be the same, well, then they're both 45, right? So for that ratio, what's the tangent for that ratio? Because then opposite and adjacent are equal to each other, right? Okay, so uh, I was going to say here, you know, look back at tan 45. Opposite equals adjacent, right? So you got sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite and adjacent are equal, then opposite over hypotenuse equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Is there an angle A such that the sine of A is equal to 2.6341? Well, you, you could go inverse sine 2.6341, right? Which calculators give you. And what does it give you? Okay, what do we know about sine? The sine is defined as opposite over hypotenuse. What do you know about the hypotenuse? It's the longest side, right? Therefore, hypotenuse is greater than opposite. So if I try and take something and divide it by something which is bigger than it, am I going to get two? What am I going to get? Less than one. one. Less than or equal to one. Okay. So the longest side hypotenuse is actually less than, well, it's not really less than or equal to. If it's a 90 degree triangle, that's just, the hypotenuse must be greater than the opposite. Okay. Therefore, opposite over hypotenuse must be less than one. Because you're always dividing something by something bigger, you can't get a number over one. Right? Think about it. That's 10, that's bigger, it's like 12 or 20. Okay, I can get 0.5, I can get. Is that it, we done?